And then we were down to three. Welcome to the semifinal round of the CollegeInsider.com tournament as Green Bay plays host to Texas Southern. Alongside Rich Sabosik, I'm Ted Stefaniak. We're in the beautiful home of the Phoenix located on their campus at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. The Phoenix finished fourth in the Horizon League this season. But they've been outstanding, Coach, in their first three CIT games so far. Well, they have turned up the notch to high octane, averaging over 93 points a game, shooting astounding 51% from the floor, and have rolled into the semis. Their starters have been outstanding this year. We take a look at the starting five for the Phoenix, led by Sandy Cohen. Sandy Cohen has been outstanding. 21 points per game in conference play, or in tournament play, I should say, up over four points from the regular season. When you look at Texas Southern now, it has been a nail-biter of a tournament for this team. They've won their th three games. So far, two of them have been in overtime. But the Road Warriors, they have gone on the road 24 times this year, come away with 13 road wins, so they know something about hostile environments. It's another impressive lineup as you take a look at the, the Tiger starters. A lot of transfers in here, some, some guys that have come from Power 5 schools, and, man, they look like a power five school jeremy combs is the leader on this team averaging over 24 points a game in tournament play up seven points he is the ultimate workhorse the winner of this one moving on to the cit championship game as we said we're down to the final three marshall has just knocked off hampton that game went right down to the wire as well coach it certainly did, and John Elmore, 28 points for Marshall. He can really fill it up. So this tournament moving to Marshall on Thursday for the championship game, but we will see who comes out of this game to head to the championship game. Texas Southern in their maroon uniforms, and it is Green Bay in their home white uniforms. Ted, expect a very up-tempo game. Both teams averaging 81.5 points per game, and they know something about getting up and down the floor. Here's a tip, and we are underway. Green Bay controls semifinal action in the CIT. Sandy Cohen brings it across the timeline. Little zone here to start the game for Texas Southern. They drop it into Tank Hemphill. Back out to Cody Schwartz. This is a long three ball for Cody. Gets his own rebound and the putback. Terrific job of following your shot. The fundamentals that Coach Link Darner teaches. Cody, an outside shooter, loves that three ball. Been hot during this tournament. Here's the first shot of the game for the Tigers. Missing an offensive rebound. Something Green Bay is going to have to contend with all night long. Now the steal. Josh McNair will take it all the way, right-hand finish on the left side. It's one of the things that Johnny Jones told me earlier today. They need to make sure they take care of the basketball because Green Bay turns defense into offense very quickly. Butler inside. Will move along the baseline on the block. Ewing missed. Now helpful. Not much of a three-point shooter. Likes to attack. Good defense that time. P.J. Pipes. Well, they're really extending that zone tonight, Coach. Well, they're going to give you a bunch of looks, but that matchup zone is their go-to defense. Over the top, inside to Combs. Blocked by Cody Schwartz, and... We're going to jump off. Wasn't sure if that was going to be a foul. I think there was a little indecision by the officials. Not individually, but as a team. Oh, it's a terrific job by Cody Schwartz. Right on top of the ball. No body. Good call by the official. So 21 seconds on the shot clock. Texas Southern looking for their first points of the game. Scoring over 80 points a game. That one bounces around on the rim and falls for Armstrong. Four two game just underway in the semifinal. Sandy Cohen launches his first shot of the game. Sandy always likes to get 
started early, and if he can get that three ball falling, it could be a big night for him. Could be a big night anyway. Doesn't need much time. Here's McNair. Little indecisiveness and a turnover. He got caught with no spacing with his teammate. And watched the cut along the baseline. Tried to hand it off. Actually should have taken the shot. But and Green Bay playing a little short-hand tonight. Jaquan McLeod not available. He's been one of their go-to guys, a transfer. And he has been outstanding this season. And he's had a terrific tournament as well. Back inside to Combs. And that falls off. Gets his own rebound. Schwartz with another block. Holmes will get you about 18 points a game, even a little better during the postseason. Hemphill, left hand finish, beautiful floater. Six two lead for the Phoenix. McNair now picks up the ball. Armstrong, he'll try a floater on the left side. Good look, just missed. Pipes over to Schwartz. Good ball movement to the corner. Hempel. Baseline jumpers no good. Fast break opportunity. Combs attacks with the left hand. Oh, terrific use of the left hand. But one of the things you're going to notice is Green Bay make or miss. They're coming right back at you. Schwartz works his way to the corner, takes the shot. Cody double digits in that last oh. game. That pass gets, hey, you know. I'm not even sure, Ted, in your <laughs> playing days, you could have climbed the ladder to get that one. I know I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be much lower for me, Coach. Oh, the... But maybe a little nerves here in the semifinals. You know, you are playing here in April. Both teams getting about as deep as you can possibly get into a tournament. Right. Perhaps you're, you are correct. It... Two-point game. Cohen. To Schwartz, double team. Cohen may have missed McNair along the baseline. Was open for a moment. Back out to Cohen. Cohen will try from the free throw line. That one, dead bounce. It falls in favor for Sandy. And he got hit on the arm, but still able to finish it. Hemphill with the foul. And we're going to break with the home team. Green Bay up four. Back at the Crest Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. That's Stefaniak, Rich Zabosik. For you, uh, with you for the CIT semifinal matchup. Glad you could be with us tonight. Green Bay out to an 8-4 lead. Take a look at Link Darner in his fourth season with the Phoenix. How about the job he has done in his career? Obviously wins a national title at Florida Southern. Comes here, first year, gets to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you're a folk hero if you do that around here. <laughs> Get to that NCAA tournament. This has been a nice run, too. A lot of people getting excited about this nice long run for the Phoenix. Manny Patterson, who checked in during that timeout, grabs that rebound. 
You know, Coach, around here you contend with Packers in the beginning of your basketball season, the Bucks throughout the season, very rarely. In fact, this is the first time you have to contend with the Milwaukee Brewers during the Phoenix that's basketball true. season. true. Baseball season is upon us. This is something new up here. <laughs> well, that's because they're still playing in April. That's the good thing. <laughs> that's a great thing, isn't it? What a fun tournament. A lot of good teams in the collegeinsider.com postseason tournament this year. When you think about the experience that both these teams are getting, the seniors are getting a, a kind of a farewell tour, so to speak, and the younger guys getting some valuable experience playing time in one-and-done situations. Shot on the way by Butler, and that is nothing but net. Three-pointer makes it a one-point game. These are three-point shooter, 54 threes on the season. And Pipes fighting for that loose ball, and we're going to get Pipes on the foul. Who says this game means nothing? <laughs> Got guys diving on the floor, giving up skin for their teammates. Pipes, the sophomore out of Chicago. Getting the start tonight. He's He's been terrific. Finds a way to, to help this team. Hasn't scored a whole lot this season has had some big threes in this tournament but you know he's kind of a lockdown defender on that ball handler full court had a chance to talk with him earlier and it's an outstanding young man there's their student athlete advisory committee rep does a lot of volunteer work in the community his parents make the trip every game from chicago good to see them here all the time there's a turnover Armstrong in for the layup, missed the layup. And here come the Phoenix. Sandy wants to run, gives it up to Hemphill, back out to Pipes, three ball on the way. Good. That's a good sign for the Phoenix. That's what Coach Darner told me before the game, that Pipes had to be a shot maker this evening. Got to make up a few points from McLeod, who's missing tonight. And we'll get another foul on the Phoenix. Coach Darner didn't like that one. Terrific unselfishness. Make the extra pass by Hemphill. And Pipes just buries it. So Hemphill will go to the bench. Pipes also. So right now on the floor for the Phoenix, you have Cam Hankerson, Trey Bell, Manny Patterson, Sandy Cohen, McNair also in there. Butler, Combs, Ewing, Jones, and Armstrong on the court for the Tigers. Jones nowhere to go. Back to Armstrong. Kicks it outside. Butler again for three. Hankerson clears. Patterson. Looking for an opening. He rushed that one a little bit. Back over to Hankerson. He'll shoot the three ball. Rebound Cohen for a moment. Now here come the Tigers. Armstrong over the top and throw down Ewing. Oh, I love it when you reward the big guys for running the floor. They talk about this being the third fastest team in the nation. They showed it right there. Off the fingertips of Patterson. Ted, how about this last possession in transition? Armstrong makes eye contact. <laughs> And then just throws it towards the rim, and Ewing with a terrific finish. Well, you That's talk about the big guys running. There were two of them there. Pick <laughs> Everybody was trying to get into the action, but Armstrong does such a great job of running the show. And think about this. He's a walk-on, not even a scholarship guy. He's doing an outstanding job. He's had a terrific college insider tournament. Junior out of Houston, Texas. And then a turnover here for the Tigers. And that's already their fourth turnover of the game. Green, Green Bay's done a good job of guarding without fouling. And we talk about Texas Southern and how good they are, and number one in the country in free throws attempted. But Green Bay, outstanding job of moving their feet on the defensive end. Sonny Patterson Ooh. lowers the shoulder, and we're going the other way. You're going to take it right in the chest, Jeremy Combs. Now, one would argue as we watch that replay that he was inside inside the block charge arc, but 
the officials, I guess, saw it otherwise. Yep, primary defender. Instead, we go the other way, though. So the foul on Patterson. And Patterson leaves the ball game with a couple of fouls. Cody Schwartz checked back in for him. Here's Combs now. Graduate senior out of Dallas. What a player he's been. He's got the ball on the block. Saw an opening, took the shot. Another offensive rebound, and now here come the Phoenix. And the steal. Butler drops it off. Back to Combs and another foul. And Combs running the floor. And Armstrong's always looking for him. Combs is going to get a chance for a couple of free throws. The number one player in the country for free throws attempted. You can see how Texas Southern always tries to get him the ball either in transition or in the half court. And that was his 300th attempt. That's that's a lot for a career coach. And that is. I mean, there's a lot of teams in the country that a whole team hasn't taken 300 free throws all year. Missed them both, but another offensive rebound. And one of the keys to the game, certainly for the Phoenix, as the Tigers make them pay with the extra opportunity and the three ball, that's good. The lead now belongs to the Tigers. McNair had the shot if he wanted it, passed it up to Bell. 12 on the shot clock into Sandy Cohen over Combs, and that's good. Back inside and attacking Butler. So Green Bay got back that time. A little flat-footed, though. Got to stop the attack. ball. Another turnover. So it's a very fast-paced game. One-point lead for Texas Southern, trying to make it four. Nope, that sh uh, shot is short. Here comes McNair. Drops it off to Bell, and then we get the block. No shot. No Texas Southern bench doesn't quite agree with that call. We've got 11-03 remaining in this first half. It's a good one so far. Texas Southern with a one-point lead. We'll be right back. One point lead for Texas Southern over Green Bay in the semifinal game of the CollegeInsider.com postseason tournament. Take a look at Johnny Jones and his first season with Texas Southern, but he's been around for a while. He certainly has. 11 years at North Texas, a couple of NCAA attorneys, and then five years as the head coach of his alma mater, LSU. And in his first year at Texas Southern, has set the school win record and he has done an outstanding job considering he got the job in July 
of putting this roster together. Coming out of that timeout, Hunter Chris checked in. He inbounded the ball and found a wide open Trey Bell for that three. So the Phoenix had the lead once again. That's tough coming out of the break. Crowd wanted to travel on that one. Butler trying to keep the handle, drops it off to Armstrong, working against a double team. Floater bounces. Second chance opportunities, coach. And we talk about rebounding in this game. That was going to be a key for Green Bay. And just quicker to the ball is Texas Southern. In this case, Justin Hopkins. Outstanding job. And Coach Jones talks about his toughness. We saw that on display with a chance for a three-point play. Miss the extra shots, so we stay at 16 apiece. Bell now to Cohen. Back inside McNair. Now McNair contributing on the offensive end. He's been a terrific player defensively this year. He's able to get some points for the Phoenix. That's always good news in Green Bay. See Texas Southern, they've as coach pointed out, they are road warriors this year. 24th road game of the season. 13 road wins. Tied with Lipscomb. Lipscomb's still playing in the NIT, but they'll be on the neutral court for the next couple of games. So Texas Southern has a chance for the win here to pass them. That is... Uh, I think people that, that aren't necessarily in the game traveling understand the difference of playing on the road and <laughs> teams going uh, home and away, the, the, the travel, the the sleeping arrangement, everything changes when you're on the road. Well, it certainly does. And in, in, in Texas Southern's case, I mean, we're not talking about the University of Texas where they charter everywhere. You know, they're, they're getting on a bus. They're traveling. So it is not easy on your body. Chris. Gives it up to Schwartz to Cohen now. Tell you what, they've done a really nice job with Sandy not letting him be able to penetrate. Doesn't matter. Pull up jumper. That is the second tough shot he has hit. The defender draped all over him. Well, look at that bounce pass. Missed the dunk though. Armstrong. With a terrific bounce pass. Now Chris loads up the three, misses. Bell tries to keep it alive. And it will belong to Texas Southern. And they're going to let it go off, off of Bell on the long rebound. When they talk about this being two of the fastest teams in the nation. Texas Southern number three, third fastest team in the nation. Green Bay 12th. I mean, this is an up and down game. It is, and both teams have missed some easy shots inside, or we'd see a few more points on the board. Bell to Schwartz, open for a moment, takes the shot, and Chris battling for the rebound. We're getting after it. Playoff time. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrific skip pass. Two guys just hustling for the ball. But Johnny Jones on the floor. He just oh, got hit with a technical. And he's still on the official. He's got to be careful. Well, Coach Jones came out on the floor when he thought there might be a little extracurricular out there. And Now he's just coming out and asking for an explanation. And that was the that was the original tee. That is not live action. So that was the replay. But now the officials get together. And, and Coach Jones upset. The, the guys kind of got tied up there at the end. But but he left the coach's box, and and I'm I'm not sure. The reason for the technical if he didn't return quick enough or what would you see? Well, the problem was is he came out onto the floor. He didn't charge an official, but he, he came out on the floor. We're going to get an explanation. Well, 
So we're gonna we're gonna get a review here. The officials will go to the monitor to take a look to see if there wasn't anything more to this, but pretty much a, a, a regular. I, I'm not sure what set him off. I yeah. mean, you had a, a situation, two guys going for the ball, and the officials jumped in, separated him. I don't think either player was really going after the other. And Coach Jones got a little excited at the end and the technical, but now they're going to take another look at it, and so will we. And I don't think that they're looking necessarily at anything between the players here, are they, Coach? Well, they're, they're looking to see if, if anybody perhaps had extracurricular activity, shall we say. Well, and I think they just got they just got tangled up. It's a lot. E it, it seems like it's a lot easier to get out of the way when you run it that slow. <laughs> like you're falling to the floor. Trying to grab a basketball, it's, it's, it's a much different world. And Ted, it's, and I know officials are trying to be proactive and make sure nothing happens. But sometimes I think when officials rush in like they do, they kind of create the, the anxiety between the players. Because as we looked at that replay, obviously the Green Bay guy, Chris, was laying on the floor. The other young man for Texas Southern was just trying to go past him as the ball comes loose. So I'm not exactly sure what they're looking at. We'll get a different angle. Unless, well, no technical was called on a player, so nothing obviously was said. Right. Well, and, and this is taking quite a while. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> so well, we, we had almost gotten through no, almost halfway or almost the first half without a review, so they're going to make up for it. There you go. <laughs> Once again, if you're just joining us, this is a semifinal matchup in the collegeinsider.com postseason tournament. The winner of this one will be visiting Marshall on Thursday for the championship game. As the officials now make their decision. They'll let the coaches know and come over and let us know. So we will. We do have a, a player infraction there too. Okay, so what what I believe they they called there, obviously the, the technical on Coach Jones, but at the end of the play, you could see 13 kind of push away the Texas Southern player. Not really anything intentional, but the fact that he put his hands on him, that is called a technical by the officials. So we're going to get a couple of trips to the free throw line by both teams. So Trey Bell was the player that they got for the for the push. So Sandy Cohen will go to the free throw line here with the Phoenix leading by four, 827 remaining in this first half. Cohen, 78% free throw shooter. He's been all everything for the Phoenix this year in his senior year. The only senior on the team. So a little more in-depth explanation. <laughs> I've never had that many officials talk to me even when I was coaching. <laughs> I mean, usually it was just, Coach, I don't want to talk to you. Here, they, everybody's, it's very it friendly. Feels like it's the United Nations coming over here. I think we'd have cheese curds on the table, <laughs> but we don't. <laughs> Basically, they both said the same thing. Technical on the coach, technical on the Green Bay player for trying to separate when he shouldn't have. He should only pay attention to his own players so they're going to both teams are going to shoot two free throws and because the arrow uh, is now in Texas Southern's direction they will get the ball after these two free throws the crowd just found out that Bell picked up a technical too and you can hear their uh, they weren't happy about it yeah. <laughs> their reaction <laughs> so John Jones 85% free throw shooter. Makes this a three point game. Phoenix still with a 21 18 lead. 8.27 remaining in this first half. Here's a look at Bell. And we go back to action. A little rest. 
I, I feel recuperated. The players, Texas Southern, this helps because they have a, a shorter bench perhaps than Green Bay, so it helps them. Nice shot, Hempel with the rebound. Back over to Schwartz. And now hand. So after a couple of technicals, you might expect them to try to tighten things up a little bit here. And it looks like they do a very quick foul. And we've got another timeout. 7.59 remaining. Green Bay leads by three. This is semifinal action of the CIT. Good game here in Green Bay. 7.59 remaining in this first half with Green Bay leading Texas Southern. Ted and Coach Z with you tonight. Seen a little bit of everything in this fast-paced game. A couple of technicals. Semifinal game. The winner of this one, of course, moving on to play Marshall on Thursday. Oh, and a double dribble. Coach Jones has got to be careful here. He's <laughs> Actually, that was a pretty good call by the official. He he knocked it away, picked it up, and then switched switched hands without continuing to bounce the basketball. Actually, a pretty good call by the official. And he didn't have the benefit of replay. And then the turnover by Christ. Pipes and McNair will check back in for Green Bay. We've talked about the run that Texas Southern has made this year into the semis and Green Bay as well. And that's what the College Insider Tournament is really all about, giving teams a chance to gain some postseason experience. You look at a couple of teams in the NCAA this year, Liberty and Wofford. A year ago, they played in the CIT and won a game. Now they go to the NCAA, and that's what this tournament is really kind of all about, a stepping stone to the NCAA or the NIT, perhaps. See Cohen. Now, Cohen is, is on the other side of this, the only senior on this team, and, and there's been some talk of professional basketball for, for Sandy, and, you know, I think a, a tournament like this and what he's been able to do in these first three games, now getting a fourth game, that's only got to help his stock at the professional level. Oh, it certainly will. I mean, his numbers are up. He has shown some different facets of his game. Jones inside to Combs. Combs big steps through and finish. That was pretty good defense by Schwartz. Just better offense by Combs. Schwartz will try it. Thinks better of it. Hempel. Tell you what, this this Texas Southern defense has just been smothering. Green Bay not able to do what they like to do, and that's attack the basket. So they'll try from the outside, and that's P.J. Pipes knocking down the three ball. 
Well, if you can't get inside, pull them outside. Pipes have been shooting better and better in this tournament up to 36% from that three-point line. Just his 39th made three ball. Actually, 40th. He's got a couple of threes in this game. Again, just a sophomore, but take a look at this junior, Armstrong, underneath the hoop. Hempel, quickly to the hoop. And Hempel lost his contact. And I don't know if they're going to stop play here. They will not. Always tough to play defense. How are you going to play defense trying to hold on to a contact lens? Doesn't matter because Armstrong beats his man to the hoop, and now Hempel will get a chance to put that contact <laughs> back in. Yes. Uh, usually they'll, they'll... They they usually do when there's no action up the floor. Clearly, Texas Southern was walking the ball up, but no call. Play on. You can see Hempel as he kind of got a hit with the ball as it came out. Look there what I found. <laughs> what? Lucky to find it right there on, on your cheek, because a lot of times it's on that free throw line. Or Oh, that's true. On the bottom of somebody's <laughs> shoe going down the court. How about the job, though, Tyreek Armstrong for Texas Southern? As we mentioned earlier, walk-on who averaged seven points a game during the regular season. He's averaging over 19 points a game in the tournament. You got a lot of seniors on this Texas Southern team, but if you're Johnny Jones, you're excited about that young man coming back next year. Well, without a doubt, Armstrong with that 32-point game and that triple overtime game, 55 minutes. Man, I would I wouldn't be able to walk for weeks. I watched that game, and that was one of the most exciting games I watched all year. And every time you thought it was over, Louisiana Monroe would knock down a three and send it into overtime. Green Bay playing in April for the first time. We get down to 12 seconds on the shot clock. Talk about those 14 teams still alive as Sandy Cohen makes the bucket. A graphic reference, one of 14 teams still alive, but, but that's all the national tournaments going on right now. We've got four in the NCAA, four in the NIT. Down to three now in the CIT and a couple in the CBI. We've got to update that graphic. Only 13 alive. But it's a fun time of the year. And a foul before the shot. Well, Texas Southern had a lot of success in the postseason, especially lately. Four to the last six years in the NCAA tournament. People may remember seeing Texas Southern in the big dance the last couple of years. Well, you've seen their head coach a couple of times this year, Mike Davis, now at the University of Detroit Mercy, former Texas Southern head coach. Outstanding coach, and oh, did he have an outstanding son play back <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Turnover, an easy bucket coming up for Armstrong. They won't get any easier than that tonight. Makes it a two-point game. Green Bay still has the lead. And Texas Southern has quick hands. If you hang the ball out there, they're going to take your, your lunch money. Ten turnovers in the game for the Phoenix. But then kind of hit and miss on the turnovers throughout the tournament. Patterson saves that back out to Cohen. Seven on the shot clock. Loose ball. Who wants it? McNair in there. Oh. It ends up in the hands of Sandy Cohen. And he finishes. I don't know how that happened. I'm not going to draw that one up on the board. <laughs> That's one of your Texas Southern. You just you fall on it and you hold on to it until they call jump ball. Oh, I was just going to say that was uh, too quick. Well, that was too good. Armstrong with a three ball. And you're feeling it. You're feeling it. Timeout on the floor. And Sandy Cohen being Johnny on the spot. They're, they're scuffling for it. And Sandy Cohen comes away. And he's got the Phoenix up one.
one point game here in the semifinals of the CIT 30 to 29 as you take a look at the mascot from Texas Southern the Tigers here along with the cheerleading squad welcome to Green Bay it's a little bit colder in Green Bay than it is in Houston they were uh, on the road quite a bit in the last couple of days 19 hours to get here hats off to those young men and women supporting their team love their basketball glad to have them in Green Bay for the semifinal matchup as Cohen takes the first shot after the timeout Cohen leading the Phoenix with 11 points in this game Armstrong leading the way with 11 for the Tigers Patterson grabs the rebound Offense in the half court has been tough. You see a lot of transition buckets in this one tonight. Pipes, that's a long three, a little longer than we usually see from PJ. Texas Southern's defense has really slowed Green Bay down in the half court. Armstrong, oh, he's heating up now. Second three ball of the game. Quick, quick, quick. Two-point lead for the Tigers. And with the handle, Patterson kept it alive. Hankerson with the finish. Now, Ted, there's a couple of ways to beat the zone defense. Either you beat it before it gets set up, or you beat it on the offensive glass. And that's exactly what Hankerson did on that possession. Both teams pretty much even when it comes to offensive rebounds right now. So it looked like for a while Texas Southern had that advantage. They were getting all these extra chance off opportunities off those offensive rebounds. But now the Phoenix also getting a few of their own. Schwartz with the rebound off the free throw kept it alive. I know you as a coach, you, you love to see those oh. offensive rebounds. <laughs> oh, I tell you, on a free throw, that's a no-no. Anderson misses. Here come the Tigers. Long three ball. Cohen. Behind the back. Crowd likes that one. He's got a great handle. And Bell whistled. Excuse me. It wasn't Bell. Bell had the ball. It was actually Jones whistled for the foul. Well, you got to credit the outstanding crowd here tonight. You had John Jones trying to sneak up behind the ball handler, and the, the crowd started screaming. <laughs> Woke him up. Jones unable to make the steal. Pipes. Air ball. A chance for the Tigers to take the lead. We're knotted at 32. Closing in on the 130 mark. To the hoop. Schwartz challenge changed the shot a little bit just enough now Cohen drops it inside Bell with the finish Cohen has been electrifying not only 11 points but three assists four rebounds he's working on a basketball digest type of night and Green Bay has done an outstanding job of, of controlling Jeremy Combs. Really shutting him down. Combs held the four points so far. They work inside. Ewing creating some space. And we'll get a shot clock violation. The shot got up there in time. Didn't touch the rim. The swarming defense of Green Bay on the interior. Kept Ewing from making contact with the rim if, if you hurry you can get a two for one but yeah, right now Green Bay just wants to get a good shot Green Bay trying to extend this the longest postseason run in program history two-point lead in a very tight game I try and keep getting the ball into that high post area it sucks the defense in
Well, they wore the defense down. Bell took advantage of an opening. Crowd on their feet. Final seconds of the half. And it'll be .4 seconds. And Texas Southern will get the ball under their own hoop. Not a lot you can do here. Well, four tenths of a second, you can actually come down with it and shoot it. If you do it quick, three tenths of a second, all you could do is tap it. So they catch a little bit of a break with four tenths. Should be the final play of the half, and that will do it. Take another look at Trey Bell sending it home and sending Green Bay into the locker room with a four-point lead. You're watching semifinal round coverage of the CIT on CBS Sports Digital.
Chit chit. Yep. Back at the Crest Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin, Green Bay. A little Tuesday night basketball for you, and a good one so far in the semifinal round of the CIT. Green Bay leading Texas Southern 36 32. Coach saw Green Bay make that 6 0 run in the final couple of minutes of that half, but this has been a close game all the way through. Well, it certainly has, and, and the key has been neither team has quite figured out how to keep it going on the offensive end in the half court. Texas Southern's defense, their matchup zone in the half court has kind of wreaked havoc on Green Bay, and, and conversely, Green Bay's man-to-man -man defense has really shut down Combs inside and forced somebody else to pick up the scoring pace, which has been Tyreek Armstrong, but Green Bay, more offensive rebounds, more runouts, hence the four-point lead. You know, we, we see this basketball style today. It, it, it seems to be all about offense, the three ball, this and that, but, <laughs> but here you are in the semifinals of a national tournament, and defense still matters a lot. Defense definitely still matters, and defense and rebounding, we talked about it coming in at Green Bay. It was a key for them was to battle on the boards with Texas Southern. Texas Southern, a team that averages almost 13 offensive rebounds a game. But Green Bay has certainly held their own on the glass and, and another key for them having the edge. Sandy Cohen leads the Phoenix with 11 points in this game on 5 of 8 shooting. Bell with that terrific dunk got up to 7 points. He's the second leading scorer for the Phoenix. It's been Armstrong on the other side. Texas Southern leading scorer with 14 points on 6 of 10 shooting. Nobody else really getting much in terms of offense. You've got Butler with 5 points early in this one, but they've got to find some other scorers right now. Well, they certainly do, and they've got to figure out a way to get Combs untracked, whether it's to try and clear a side with him and a shooter, whether to, to create some space and try and let him back his defender down, but you know, Combs needs to get on track if Texas Southern is going to come out from this deficit. All right. Well, we've got to take another timeout. We're glad you could be with us on this Tuesday night for semifinal action in the CollegeInsider.com postseason tournament. You're watching all the action right here on CBS Sports Digital. We'll be right back. Your town needs to celebrate because every Google item you bring home brings jobs and right. more to your community.
Halftime between Green Bay and Texas Southern in this semifinal game of the CIT. Coach Z and Ted with you for this one. Let's take a look at some of those highlights from the first half. And it's a quick start for Texas Southern on this one, their leading scorer. Combs with a layup, but held to just four points in that first half. Butler lining up a three ball. He had a quick start as well with his five points early on. P.J. Pipes, two of four from that three-point line. Some big, big baskets getting the start tonight for the Phoenix. How about this alley-oop? Ewing, one of five from the field, but that one is one everyone will remember. Lumpkins knocking down a three ball. Who says the bank isn't open this late in Green Bay? Took out the debit card. <laughs> Cohen looking for shots. They really bottled him up. Took him where he could. An easy two around the free throw line. Then Cohen doing what he can with the assist to McNair, the easy layup, and then Cohen again showing what he can do, the leading scorer so far for the Phoenix. That an old adage, when seniors make plays, you win games. That's what Sandy Cohen has done with Tyreek Armstrong as well. He's got 14, and then Bell with a big finish. And Bell with seven points in this one, and it is Green Bay with a four-point lead. We're gonna take one more timeout. When we come back, second half action. And 20 minutes to decide who's going to meet Marshall in the CIT championship game on Thursday. Glad you could be with us. You're watching all the action on CBS Sports Digital. Getting ready for the second half here at the Crest Center in Green Bay. The Phoenix leading the Tigers of Texas Southern 36-32. Ted Stavaniak, Rich Sabosik with you. Coach, what are some of the adjustments Green Bay is going to want to make here to start the second half? I don't know about adjustments for Green Bay. It's simply stay the course. You've got to continue to, to make sure that you locate Combs, make every shot difficult. They did a good job in the first half of swarming him in the low post, preventing him from getting easy looks. Obviously, transition defense and rebounding will be key for Green Bay. For Texas Southern, don't forget about Combs. Keep trying to get him the ball, maybe swing the ball once or twice to shift the defense so that it's easier to get the ball inside. And then defensively, you got to do a better job on the defensive glass. If they can clean it up on a defensive glass, they could shut down Green Bay in the half court. 
Look, Holmes, a SWAC Player of the Year, also Newcomer of the Year, even though he was a graduate transfer out of LSU. He's just had a terrific season, and, and I think you're going to see, he's going to make some noise here in the second half. Well, there's a lot of connections between Johnny Jones and, and these players that transferred in. Obviously, the two young men from LSU, Coach Jones actually coached them when he was the head coach at LSU. His son, who transferred in from Nevada, that's where Coach Jones was last year as an assistant for Eric Musselman. So there's a lot of connection. It's just not happenstance that they all ended up in Houston. <laughs> Of course, Nevada made it to the Sweet 16 last year. Coach Jones on that staff. Well, Tyreek Armstrong does a terrific job of putting pressure on the ball, and he forces a double dribble and a turnover. You know, working with the younger kids, we always talk about keeping that dribble low, but I don't know if I've ever seen the defense stay so low on that. That was terrific. Now with Armstrong, you're keeping <laughs> it low, you're getting him down with the Rugrats. <laughs> So first offensive possession of the second half here for the Tigers. They try to bounce it inside. Ewing, that shot is blocked, and Tigers will get it under their own hoop. Now they are constantly trying to get the ball inside, and that is the reason why they lead the country in free throws attempts. But Green Bay doing an excellent job. Their interior defense not fouling. Turnover. That's the handle on the baseline. So both teams with a turnover to start the second half. Again, the winner of this one moving on to the championship game of the CIT. And that'll be against Marshall at Marshall. Oh, McNair into the spin cycle and the finish. <laughs> McNair just too quick in the interior. <laughs> right away going high off the glass it's Armstrong again who else there's no time to celebrate <laughs> if you are Green Bay or if you're Texas Southern they're coming right back at you Pipes looking for his third three ball and he knocks it down PJ Pipes that's a career or, yeah that's actually a career high he had a couple of three balls the other night in that quarterfinal matchup the pipes three threes in this one. Just what the doctor ordered with McLeod out tonight. Cohen with the rebound. And Sandy leading the Phoenix with 11 points. And he's got the ability to put up some big numbers. We'll see if he can get on track here in the second half. Pro prospect drops it off inside to McNair. And that is a little long. Somebody shut the door. Armstrong working against Pipes now. Back into Ewing. And Ewing with the size advantage tries to muscle it up and will go to the free throw line. This is a very disciplined Texas Southern team. They understand what they want to do on the offense and they attack that way. And we see that in the first couple of possessions just going right inside to their post guys who have the size advantage. We didn't see a lot of free throws in that first half, and we'll take that all day long. And Phoenix one of three from the free throw line, while Texas Southern was two of six in the first half. And Ewing knocks down the first free throw, 52% free throw shooter, coming off a 23-point game and 11 rebounds. Look at three double-doubles in that last game in that quarterfinal matchup. Of course, that game went triple overtime against Monroe. So they've got more than one guy that can certainly put up some big numbers on the stats page. With that, we see man-to-man -man defense for the first time tonight for Texas Southern. Changing things up. Always want to keep the other team guessing a little bit on the defense. Schwartz knocks down the three ball. So the outside shooting coming alive for this Phoenix team. Terrific shot by Schwartz. He was challenged well on the perimeter, but still able to knock it down. Schwartz coming off a 13-point game where he knocked down three three balls in the quarterfinals. 
And there you see the strength of Combs, who says, it's time for me to get going. Excellent job of carving out space on the offensive glass. And then the steal, no foul on that. Coach Jones looking for it, Combs was looking for it. They play on. Well, I'm not so disappointed they didn't call it because he had the advantage. You know, kind of like the, the soccer rule, if no advantage is gained, <laughs> Playoff <laughs> basketball. <laughs> I tell you. I don't think Coach Jones agrees with you. No, he wanted to foul. <laughs> he knows he wants to get to the bonus. And I don't blame him on that, but they had numbers. I think that's what the Green Bay player thought. Okay, I'll foul him here because they do have numbers, but no call. And before the inbound, they separate Schwartz and Combs who were jockeying for position. And it doesn't matter because they drop it into Ewing who finishes. Everybody thinking about Combs. He's the decoy. <laughs> and Paul lost the handle. Not sure if somebody got a piece of that. Tried to go underneath. He's had some success with that move throughout the season. To the corner. Three ball on the way from Lumpkin. He hit one in the first half. Now Cohen behind the back into a double team and throws it away. Trying to do a little bit too much on that one. They kick it out. Here's Armstrong. Makes a pay. Defense into offense. Texas Southern on the run. One point game. Phoenix looking for a hoop and that three point shot was blocked by Combs. Here's Hankerson. He'll knock down the three ball. And the Phoenix start the second half with three threes. And they've got a 47 43 lead. Armstrong inside the Combs. How did that not fall? Now McNair. Hop step through the lane. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Hempel with a spin move. Wow! Just terrific ball movement. Keeping Texas Southern chasing. All the chemistry. These guys haven't played but one season together, but you're playing this deep in, and now the shot is blocked by Combs. And a free throw coming up. Wow. A lot of action in here, Coach. Uh, they are letting him play inside. It's SEAL Team 6 basketball. Not for the faint of heart. Wow. And we're going to get a foul at the end. All right, man. Now stop the former degree LPGA partner. I'll do our work with I am safe. Damn straight. Three punts.
back of the crest. Coach, uh, I, I know you've been impressed with the action out here, but I think you, you enjoyed the golfing just as much during that timeout. It was the best shot I have ever seen on a promo. The golf shot. It was it was like a six inch hole. He did it from the three point line. I think it's a two inch hole. <laughs> Put it in. Oh my! The free throw line. Good good putting here in Green Bay. Meanwhile, yeah, we some get good free throw shooting. Do we get free cheese fries? We should for get that? something for that. <laughs> well, this isn't your first time to Green Bay. I know that. Well, it isn't. Green Bay has actually been nice to me. I've only played here once. And way back when my first year at University of Missouri Kansas City the old brown 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 county, brown county arena you oh I love that place we won by two <laughs> of course Tony Bennett had some great oh, games my. as a player there when he played for Green Bay now leading Virginia to the final four of the NCAA tournament I, I looked up his numbers he shot 49.7 percent from the three-point line for his career here at Green Bay and that wasn't the Brown County Arena was not the most well-lit arena in the country I mean that's just amazing could you imagine if it had better lighting he might have shot like 52 <laughs> percent I mean, just phenomenal well of course Link Darter the the head coach here at Green Bay is is a Purdue graduate so Very that was tough. the big talk after the quarterfinal <laughs> win coach who are you rooting for Purdue or Virginia you got the Green Bay tie you've got your Alumni playing. You he's, know, he's stuck with Purdue. I, we, we can give him credit for that. You have to stick with your alma mater. And, <laughs> and two great guys, two terrific coaches, Matt Painter, who I've known for a long time, Tony Bennett, who I've had his games. And just they're what the coaching profession is all about. They're teachers, and they're just they make a difference in their universities, in their communities, and certainly with their teams. Yeah, they're. Uh, Link's got his team in the semifinal here tonight. A very good game against Texas Southern. Trying to hold on to a four-point lead. McNair double teamed, extra contact in there, and a foul against the Tigers. Well, it has been outside action for Green Bay until this possession. They try and get the ball inside. They draw the foul. Good set play out of the timeout to draw the foul. To Hempel. He'll try the spinner again. Tried it the other way. Offensive rebound. Another opportunity. Hempel straight at it this time. No need for a fancy spin. Just attack. Uh, just go right to the rim. Six point lead for the Phoenix. Closing in on the 14 minute mark of the second half. Holmes left open. And even though he hits it off the, the bank, a guy like that that can score that many points in a game is going to get a... Well, there's a, there's a lot of confidence when he touches the ball. And, you know, Green Bay had one off glass in the first half, so it's even. <laughs> Here's Patterson back out to Bell. Bell long on that three. Now Armstrong. Pulls it back. Whose foot is that off of? I think we can get it off of Patterson. It looked like it went off of Manny's foot. We'll take another look, and it did. So 22 seconds on the shot clock for this possession. Hempel gets in front. And we're going the other way. It starts with the defense here. It's, it's good solid defense and no call, but swarming the basketball in the interior again for Green Bay pays dividends. Butler was surprised that he wasn't called or there wasn't a call one way or the other, but a great job to realize that he had an open lane. That closed quickly. Tempo. That one was poked away. But Green Bay has done a good job against this zone of getting the ball to the high post area. But once you get it there, it's either a shot or a pass reversal to the other side. You put it on the floor, and those quick hands of Texas Southern's guards will knock it away. 
Hankerson in and out. Bell keeps it alive. Wow. Now well, he's able to get the pass out. It's terrific. Hempel from the free throw line. Bell keeps it alive again. Gets his defender in the air. A hard foul and some free throws coming up. Nice job by Trey Bell. Green Bay working the glass to perfection. And again, offensive rebound effort has really given the difference to Green Bay at this point. And they're going to take another look at it to see if on the foul there was contact above the shoulders. And was it intentional or wasn't it? Hmm. Well, another review. You know, that shot fake under the basket, that used to be a go-to move for post players back in the day. Today, they don't use it so much, but still so effective as you saw Bell once again. And, and it needs to be used more because everybody wants to make ESPN or CBS highlights of blocking a shot. And you can see the pump fake. And I'm not, you know, from that angle, it looks like he does hit him in the head, but... The first angle we saw in live action, I think he just rocked his head back. Now, does a touch to the head automatically result in a flagrant one, or there's got to be a little more intent to it? Well, is it a question of does he, does he get ball? Yes. And then he does he come down right on his head? It, it appears he gets more of the shoulder, but officials and I have disagreed in the past. <laughs> Not only in the broadcast booth? Not only in the broadcast booth. Although I find myself saying on air, good job by the officials much more than I did when I was coaching. <laughs> As many years at Kansas City in your coaching career. And they're still talking about it, but it's, and we're gonna get an explanation. I love when guys come over and, and explain to us what's, what they're calling. So we looked at it, they took a look at it, and the ruling? And they said excessive contact. He, he hits him in the head, so they're gonna get two free throws and the ball. Yeah. And Coach Jones discussing it with the officials. You know, and one thing is you, we talk about officiating. As a coach, you don't care if the officials are good or bad. You just want them to be consistent. So if you're going to be consistently good, well, that's outstanding. But if you're going to be consistently bad, that's okay too because then you can adjust and your players can adjust. So that got to get that consistency by the officiating crew. So this will be three free throws? He's going to get two and the ball. Two on the ball. Okay. The toughest thing to do, stand up there at the free throw line by yourself. And Bell, normally a very good free throw shooter, almost 82% from the line. Missed opportunity, and he's been playing really well in this tournament. Close to 11 points a game. Seven tonight. Hankerson goes high, two hand flush. The ability to get the ball into the high post area collapses the defense, frees up for the dunk. We haven't seen too many wide open lanes in the half court sets. Cam found one, and there's Combs. So, Mr. Combs, he just works so hard on the offensive glass. And when you talk about guys who are great rebounders, those are the guys who they think every time a shot is taken, that's a pass to them, and that's the Combs mentality as well. And you see what he's done this season, close to 18 points a game, nearly 10 rebounds. Held to four points in that first half, but up to 11 now. Mid-major All-American. Also, as he told me before the game, the best 2K basketball player on the team. An errant pass by Green Bay. It's all about the video games and the free time now, isn't it? <laughs> you 
just make a video game. If each coach could make their own video game, they could study the. Exactly. The plays. Oh, exactly right. <laughs> Three-point lead here for Green Bay. We get a Phoenix foul on Manny Patterson. And that's going to be his fourth, so a decision here for Coach Dunner. I don't think it's going to be a very tough decision as he's going to come out of the game. Schwartz back in. Justin Hopkins inbounded that pass. 12 minutes to go in the half. Blocked by Tank. And then Cohen reached in and stopped Hopkins from taking that shot, but we'll shoot a couple of free throws. Timeout on the floor. It's a three-point lead for Green Bay over Texas Southern. Semifinal action in the CIT. We'll be back after this timeout. Fifty-three, fifty. Green Bay leads Texas Southern. Eleven fifty-three to go in this second half. The winner moving on to play Marshall in a championship game. We send Justin Hopkins to the free throw line. But you know this is the semifinal round, fourth game for both of these teams in the CollegeInsiders.com postseason tournament. What a terrific opportunity for both of these teams to play in this tournament. Well, you talk about what the founders of collegeinsider.com have done for mid-major basketball and I use that term mid-major only because they aren't the higher resource teams but it gives it gives a team a chance to shine they have the mid-major top 25 and these teams can play with anybody in the country I mean we've seen Wisconsin excuse me Green Bay in the NCAA tournament Texas Southern with three big wins this year against Oregon Texas A&M Baylor is we watch Bell put it down, but you know, if you are a hoops junkie, there is nothing better than off the bounce by Angelo Lento. She will tell you who the good players are before the national reporters know. I mean, she was the guy, or excuse me, the, the reporter who knew Chris Clemens, the 3,000 point scorer at Campbell, and John Morant when he was a freshman at Murray State, who's now an NBA lottery pick. And, you know, if you are a hoops junkie, as I say, you need to go to collegeinsider.com because they'll tell you things that the Jay Billises and, and those guys just don't know. They don't they don't dig into the depths. Yeah, there's a lot of other teams around the country. That's for sure. And we're seeing just a back and forth here between these two two teams and Green Bay with that. Two point lead 57 55. Passes picked off. And Hopkins all the way to the hoop. Contact, no call. Drop off. Hempel throws it down. Thought maybe he took off too soon. 
Oh, he can fly. Textbook transition. Ball never hits the floor. And Heppel on the defensive end hacks it away, and it goes off of Butler, so Green Bay gets the ball back. Just a terrific pass, and Hemphill with a flush for the finish. He's been doing that all season long. I think the first dunk we saw this season from him, his, his uh, transfer year here, he went up with a one-handed slam, came down in that superhero pose on one knee. Well, we, we should know that he should be able to do that. He was a, a 6'11 high jumper in, in high school. That's getting up there. I'm telling you, if Green Bay had a track team, they ought to just start a track team just for him. <laughs> Send him to the national <laughs> tournament. Bell with the steal. And then lost it. And good cool. read. Yeah, it certainly was. And Combs telling him, get it up in the air. If you got a, a bigger post player, throw it in the air. If you got a smaller post player, put it on the ground. We talked about the success these teams have had in transition. And on the inbound play, the Tigers have been outstanding. Oh. Well diagrammed, well executed. Remains a two-point game. McNair guarded by Combs, now Cohen. And Armstrong with the grab. And that's an easy call for the official. You put two hands on the dribbler, it's automatic. We're, and Ted, we're quickly moving into unchartered territory for Green Bay. They haven't had a close one in this tournament. Meanwhile, this is just another day in the park for Texas Southern. <laughs> That's right, coming off a triple overtime win against Louisiana Monroe in the quarterfinal round. But two of their three games so far in this tournament have gone to overtime. Green Bay, their scores have been a little more lopsided. Cohen changes direction, makes the shot, will shoot a free throw. His body control is excellent. And the judicious use of the left hand. That's his first bucket of the second half. You know what I'd like to be? I'd like to be the referee on the one-on-one -on -one game between Sandy Cohen and his sister, who is... He's actually the Big East Player of the Year at Marquette. Letitia Heideman. <laughs> oh, those would be those would be pretty good battles. We got a timeout. timeout Texas On the floor, Texas Southern wants to talk about it. So we will. We're going to take a break. It is a four-point lead for Green Bay over Texas Southern. You're watching the semifinals of the CIT. We will be right back. Take a look at Sandy Cohen, 13 points in this game. Three points away from 1,000 points in his career, and that's 
just under two seasons, Coach. That's amazing. I was just going to say, it's, it's <laughs> a thousand points here. It doesn't talk about how many points he scored at Marquette. Scramble for the ball, extra shots, extra points. As Butler finishes, two point game. And Cohen started his career at Marquette. Sat out a year, his transfer year. Came back in December of 2016. So he missed a little bit of his first season as well. So to get a thousand points in two seasons is, is amazing. Bell keeps it alive. Now Cohen, top of the key, fresh shot clock. Smart play by Pipes. Knew he couldn't grab it. Tipped it to a teammate. Bell, 17-footer is good. Bell finding a way to help this team into double digits, 11 points in the game for Trey. And for all you Green Bay fans who are wondering who's going to score after Cohen graduates and leaves, well, Bell's a pretty good answer. Poked away, turnover. Just the ninth of the game for the Tigers. Now Cohen, reverse layup, gets it to go. Another terrific play by Sandy. Holmes now looking for the answer. Holmes with a foul. For Cody Schwartz on the defense. Schwartz, an excellent job of moving his feet as we watch Sandy Cohen with an even better job of moving his feet. The reverse layup. He's got the Phoenix up six. Six-point lead for the Phoenix over the Tigers of Texas Southern in the semifinal game of the CollegeInsider.com postseason tournament. Some good defense here by the Phoenix. A terrific job by Schwartz. Moving his feet, he resists the temptation to reach in to try and knock the ball away. Takes it with the chest. The two local guys making plays at both ends. Cohen with the basket, Schwartz with the defensive play. Those two were... High school rivals. You should see the gins get packed for those two when oh. they met each other. Down to the wire, top some of the top teams in the state. Fun basketball in high school, and it's it's even more fun to see these guys team up as teammates for Green Bay. Cohen, a little step back, and that's that's a tough one. Lumpkin bailed him out there. Yeah, exactly right. You got to get both hands up and take another look. Just gets his arm. Lumpkin, who had given some good minutes off the bench in the first half. Sandy short on the free throw. The Phoenix struggled at the free throw line tonight. Just one of seven so far in this game. That's that's tough, especially when you're playing in a in a semifinal game. It certainly is, and very atypical. I mean, the team shoots over 70%. Missed them both. 
Green Bay holds on to a six point lead. Butler cut off by Hempel. Armstrong, leading score tonight. Gives it back up to Butler. Butler shot on the way, didn't hit anything. Green Bay will get the ball back. Coach Jones is looking for a foul on that one. And Coach Butler, or excuse me, Butler didn't react as if he was fouled, but usually has been very accurate here this evening. Oh. Cohen and Armstrong, good matchup. P.J. back into Cohen, double team, steps through, found a little bit of an opening, but was short on the shot. Second chance opportunity, Cohen tries the baseline again, and it's going to get whistled for the travel. I got to tell you, Ted, I, I think they missed the travel on him before. I'm not sure that that one was a travel. But we'll get another chance to see it in slow motion. No, that, actually. <laughs> Change pivot foot. I'm saying it again. It was a good call by the official. <laughs> We're keeping track over here, Coach. <laughs> Butler into the paint. What a move. Change body position midair in the paint. Well, the senior transfer from Colorado State doesn't want his season to end just quite yet. Bell, three ball, knocks it down. Trade Bell, couple of three balls tonight. And a seven point lead for the Phoenix as we close in on the five minute mark. Cohen with the rebound. Pipes. And Hempel with the offensive rebound, but that gets poked away. Back on the other end, and a turnover. Oh, big opportunity there for the Tigers. They had a two-on-one and a good pass ahead by Armstrong, and Jones just not able to draw it in. I think he kind of much like a receiver who started to run before he caught it. A good break for Green Bay and a tough turnover for Texas Southern. A little break in the action here as they work on Tank Hempel. It might be another contact. So it is another contact there. I wonder if it's the same one. <laughs> we'll give him a moment to get that put back in. Meanwhile, we've got 443 remaining in the seven point game. The winner moving on to play Marshall in the CIT championship on Thursday. It has been every bit of exciting of an exciting game as we expected when we tip this one off. Well, I think it, right now it's the first one to 80 wins. <laughs> it's been about their average for both teams. On pace to do that. Here's Cohen. Rebound McNair. Look at the offensive rebounding. It's been huge for the Phoenix the last couple of minutes. The Phoenix only averaged about nine offensive rebounds a game. And that actually is their 10th offensive rebound. So that effort has paid dividends. Eric Armstrong with the answer. And they're going to need some quick answers here. Trailing by seven. Four minutes to go. Cohen. That was blocked. Looked like Ewing got a piece of that one. Now Jones to the corner. Butler lines up a three and buries it. And just like that, it's a four-point game. Things tightening up here in Green Bay. Pipes to Bell. Inside to Cohen, 10 on the shot clock. Double team coming for Sandy. They leave McNair open. And then the rebound by Butler. Quick three ball knocked down by Butler once again. So back to back threes from Butler. We've got a one point game. 
Smart play by John Jones. He knows who the hot man is. Get the ball to Butler, and the Butler delivers. And we've got Texas Southern down one. One point game, Green Bay leads. Green Bay leads by one, 70, 69, 310 to go. It's not only playing hard on the court, they're playing hard in between the breaks as well. well catching that rubber chicken is not easy. <laughs> that guy's diving with shopping carts out here on the floor. And we've got a great finish coming up here in Green Bay. About three minutes to go. The Phoenix up by one, they've got the ball. Coach Darner calls the timeout to break the run and also get a good offensive possession. Texas State on an 8-0 run over the last minute or so. And now a turnover and a chance for the Tigers to take the lead. And they throw it away. And Combs was wide open as he beat the Phoenix down the floor. But a little bit high. Texas Southern has led for less than a minute in this game. They had a chance to take the lead there. Now Green Bay with a chance to build on a one-point lead. Bell. Bell has been automatic here in the second half. The shooting contest between Butler and Bell. Butler met at the rim by Cohen. Some free throws coming up. Cohen getting up high for that block. Take another look at this one. Looks like a pretty clean block. The officials had a different angle, perhaps. I think the Phoenix fans would agree with you on that one. But the foul sends Devacchio Butler to the free throw line. A senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Tight, or actually, uh, the first free throw makes it a three point game. Butler averaging just over 13 points a game in his six postseason games this season. Between the SAC, uh, SWAC tournament and the CIT. The free throws make it a two point game, 2 10 to play. If you're Green Bay, you run your offense perhaps through Cohen. Well, with two minutes and you're up by two, are you trying to get deep into that shot clock or you want to just keep playing your game? I think you really, right now, you're just trying to get the best shot. Yeah. 
They, they were talking about they were asked coach Jones was asking for a review on that last one, but it's under under two minutes. It was right at two minutes and from that replay. I'm it looked like it went off of Texas Southern anyhow Cohen one on one the block count the bucket and a free throw coming up for Sandy Cohen a milestone bucket as he goes over a thousand points for his Green Bay career in the last two seasons but more importantly a huge bucket for the Phoenix Cohen just able to put the ball on the floor get his shoulders be by the defender and as that happens he cannot get called for the charge What a terrific career this young man has had. He comes back home. Now he's trying to finish it off with a championship. Now that three-point play puts Green Bay up by five. 76-71. Under two minutes to go in this semifinal game. Crowd trying to come alive to help their hometown Phoenix. Butler met at the rim. Combs with the offensive rebound and the putback. Keep an eye on Jeremy Combs down the stretch. And once you had his man go over and make the block, nobody was there to box him out. Easy finish. Hankerson, he's met at the rim. And now a one possession game with 1.15 to go. Armstrong gives it up. Ewing. Now the Tigers will take some time off the clock. Looking for a shot to the corner. Three ball miss. And we'll get the foul on Hempel. Actually, that's going to be a good foul by Hempel because Ewing had inside position. And that will send the the team that leads the country in free throws attempted back to the foul line. Ewing at the free throw line, the senior out of Richmond, Texas. Eight points in the game. Got the first one. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Possession arrow belongs to Texas Southern. As we go right down to the wire in the semifinals. Somebody's got to come out of here tonight to go play Marshall on Thursday. And look for Texas Southern to call timeout on the made free throw to set their defense. In and out, Cohen with the rebound. And it remains a two-point game. Under a minute to play. Nearly a steal there as we get down to 13 seconds on the shot clock. Hempful. Well, now the officials will get together. Not sure what the call was. He didn't signal charge. He didn't signal block. I, I'm still not sure what the original call is. The only thing we do know is on the floor, it was called Green Bay ball, but we get another look. So, All right. We're assuming yeah. a block. Or are they looking at the possibility that he stepped on the line? The ball may have hit the line. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. The, yeah. We were blocked by that angle initially. The ball came out of his hands, actually. Appears to come out before the contact is made. This might be a better angle. Yeah. Looks like it goes off the leg yeah. of Holmes. So we are under two minutes, actually 40.6 seconds remaining, so they can review that. An explanation. So they do confirm it with the replay. These are such bang bang calls. That and this is where the replay can really absolutely the let's, game. let's get it right. Trying to get to a championship game. Absolutely. Let's get it right. And 
ball actually went off Combs's foot before contact was made, so good call. Green Bay's got 10 seconds on the shot clock, 40.6 seconds remaining in the game. And Green Bay with a two-point lead. Here's Cohen to Hankerson, five on the shot clock. Hankerson, pull-up jumper, rebound by Lumpkin. Texas Southern looking to tie or take the lead. See how deep they want to get into the shot clock. Kick it out. This is Butler for the three. No good. Rebound, Pipes. Big rebound by Pipes. Well, that was partially blocked. Butler had a good look at it, but Cohen on the defensive end gets a piece of it. And now Pipes has a chance to put it out of reach with a couple of free throws. Both teams in the bonus. And if you're Texas Southern, you're just trying to get to overtime because they win in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> That's where two of their three playoff games have come from, including a triple overtime win in their quarterfinal matchup. Pipes an 84% free throw shooter. And the free throws will always continue for Green Bay. 12 seconds to go. Green Bay leads by two. Texas Southern inside. Combs ties it. 6.1 seconds to go. Now Cohen gets it across the timeline. Kicks it out to Hankerson. Hankerson, and that is blocked at the bucket. I don't know where the official's going. It's a tie score. So it is a tie game, 76-76. And like you said, this is exactly what Texas Southern, they don't mind this. They've been here before. An unbelievable end-to-end -end action. The drive by Armstrong gave Combs with an easy drop-off. A tough finish on the other side of the rim, but an excellent job by Green Bay. No timeout. They attack. Cohen splits the defense and a good block at the end of the play on Hankerson by Texas State. Well, let's see if we can look at the last two plays. The, the, the basket by Combs and then the block at the end. Let's see if we can cue those up. We've got a five-minute overtime coming up here. Tied at 76 apiece. Both teams averaging about 81 points a game. So and they're used to playing up in the upper stratosphere with with these college basketball points, but when it comes to overtime, you, you have to certainly think that this Tiger team has got the advantage. Now, here's a... That's, that is the turnover about... Or, excuse me, not the turnover, but the review that went out of bounds off his foot, and then the block by Cohen. And that set up the one-on-one -on -one free throw by Pipes. And then the block at the end... Is that Jones that got a piece of that one? I believe so. Well, <laughs> you want to play in a championship game, you got to play at least five more uh, minutes. You, you got to earn it. <laughs> I think I said it with about six or seven minutes to go. First one to 80. Nobody got to 80. We're playing on. Good call, Coach. <laughs> Winner heading to Marshall on Thursday for the CIT championship. It is Texas Southern with the first possession of the OT. Jones to the wing. Combs missed. Tank with the rebound. Hempel. Help coming. They drop it off to Bell. Bell goes up high on that mid-range jumper. That is not an easy shot over a good defender in Combs. Bell has been fantastic here this evening. Bell, 19 points. And that is a new career high for Travian Bell. 
Butler somehow keeps it alive. I don't know how he was able to finish that one. The Butler did it. <laughs> he keeps doing it. Back to even, 78 apiece, under four to go. This is, you know, with that other semifinal game at Marshall tonight, Marshall and Hampton, that went right, right down to the wire. Look at Bill! Career night! Twenty-one points for Trey Bell. Now Jones, three-pointer, not sure if anyone got a piece of that. Tank tries to keep it alive, and he goes out of bounds with it. So good effort, but Tigers will get it under their own hoop with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Should we expect anything less <laughs> from the College Insider Tournament? As many overtimes as we've seen, and then watch this flush by Bell. Oh, magnificent. So good tonight. Out of bounds again. It was knocked out by Cohen. So 10 seconds on the shot clock. And then we've got two free throws coming up. Combs going to the line. That you know, these out of bounds plays have been very effective. Well, that's the Tigers. Ted, that's how coaches earn their money. <laughs> what? type of plays do you draw up in dead ball situations and we've seen some terrific ones both from Johnny Jones and Link Darner here this evening actually a pretty good foul by Bell put Combs at the line to make him earn it Combs who's been averaging close to 18 points a game this season sitting at 19 points Combs and Butler both at 19 Armstrong at 21 so Distributing the ball, knocking down some points. And that is the quietest 19 points for somebody I've seen in a long time. Missed them both. Free throw shooting. Becoming an issue for both teams in this one. Remember, Green Bay just 2 of 10 from the line tonight. Hempel spinning. Holmes came over on the double team. Plenty of time on the shot clock. That pass is picked off and then a breakaway foul. You're going to get an intentional foul. As Armstrong streaking in, his jersey was grabbed by pipes from behind. Look at this read. He just shoots the gap. Terrific play by Armstrong. Gets up in that passing lane. Just as good on the defense as he is on the offense. The lefty knocks down the first free throw. Armstrong up to 21 points in the game. Excuse me, up to 23 points after the free throws. You know, Armstrong proving the theory that it's not the size of the fight in the dog it's the size of the or excuse me the size of the dog in the fight it's the fight in the dog and and he is just putting his team on his back nine of 14 from the field including three three balls tonight six assists seven steals nice night for armstrong now trying to lead his team to the championship game on thursday Nice shot by Ewing. Another assist for Armstrong. And that is a rare lead in this game for Texas Southern. And a big one, 82-80, and then the turnover and a chance for the Tigers to extend that two-point lead. Armstrong will take his time. We go under two minutes. Three ball in and out. Cohen with the rebound. Now a chance for the Phoenix to tie or take the lead. Inside Hempel. He'll challenge Combs and win. Excellent job by Hempel. It goes right into the body of the shot blocker. And Combs cannot challenge the shot. 
Tie game, 82 apiece. Butler guarded by Hempel. Picked off by Sandy. Sandy up. Fresh. And the foul. Another look. This is just an unbelievable defensive play by Cohen. He read it like a Green Bay Packers safety as he shot the gap. And Armstrong fouls him at the end. Cohen with a chance to stretch this lead. Oh, we have seen some terrific offensive plays and some even better defensive plays by Armstrong and then Cohen on that possession. Cohen a chance to add to that lead, and they do. Three-point lead. Well, big-time players step up, whether it's Armstrong, whether it's Cohen. We're seeing some terrific basketball. You see the crowd, they certainly appreciate the hometown team tonight. We're going to get another look of Cohen just team defense. He leaves his man, picks the pocket of Butler, and then finishes with authority. Sandy Cohen up to 21 points in this game. He and Bell both with 21. That 21 for Bell, that's a new career high for the sophomore. On the other side, you've got Armstrong with 23 points. Butler and Combs each have 19. Ewing's dumped in 11 points. It's just been that kind of night. Well, Coach Darner calls timeout to make sure he gets his defense set. Talking about no threes. We don't want to give up the three, but most importantly, when the shot goes up, you got to find five Texas Southern jerseys. And if you're Texas Southern, you got a lot of options. You got Armstrong on the perimeter. Ewing has been very good here this evening. You got their workhorse Combs inside. And Ted, it's not always the first shot that beats you. It's the second one. Don't need a three here. As we reach the one minute mark. Armstrong trying to get to the hoop high off the glass and look at the hustle by Jones and the follow-up shot it's a one-point game 50 seconds to go and you got plenty of time no need to foul if you're Texas Southern and Green Bay will use another timeout so Link Darner will have one more timeout remaining in this overtime we have seen some big offensive rebounds here this evening, Combs keeps it alive, and then Johnny Jones just hustles to the spot. Cool as a cucumber as he knocks the jump shot down. Coach, it's, coach it's a play son. by the coach's son, right? That's what you expect. In the gym. <laughs> it's funny, I, I, in talking with Coach Jones before the game, I asked him, I said, how is it coaching your son? He says, it's, it's just a terrific, unbelievable experience. You know, and I, I, just the ability to be around. And like he said, you know, when, when he was growing up and, and going through high school, he was coaching his own team. So he missed some of his games, and now he gets a chance to make up for it. I'm sure that's a big smile to both mom and dad's face on that big bucket. Well, they're trying to get to the CIT championship game on Thursday. That's where Marshall's waiting. Marshall will host that game. We'll see this Texas Southern team wins. Will they continue on the road? They made a 19-hour drive to get to Green Bay to support their Tigers tonight. I don't think they ever want to go home. <laughs> I mean, as good as they play on the road, who needs to go home? So we've got 42.8 seconds to go in this overtime. And we'll say the first overtime because you never know with these two teams. Well, you, would, inbound. you would think you would run a set play perhaps for Cohen coming off the stagger. Shot clock down to 15. Hempel's got it on the block, kicks it back to Bell. Sandy looking for a screen to work off of. Picked up by Combs. Off balance shot, bounces, dances on the rim. Big rebound by Ewing. And now 16 seconds to go. Green Bay with a one-point lead. Texas Southern with the ball. Holmes offensive rebound in the putback. Eight seconds to play. 
And Link Donner will use his final timeout, timeout now please. trailing by one. That is what Texas Southern does. A team that averages almost 13 offensive rebounds a game. And the offensive rebounding opportunities are because they penetrate, they shift the defense, and they move without the ball. And you can see Combs, what a nose for the basketball. Combs with 21 points in this one. Green Bay has out-rebounded Texas Southern tonight, 45-39. But when you look at the offensive rebounds, it's an 18-15 advantage for the Tigers, none bigger than that last one by Combs. And if you're sitting in Texas Southern's huddle, you're thinking, okay, eight seconds. Do we slow the ball down? We've seen some 2-2-1 two -two from them earlier. We've seen the matchup zone. We've also seen some man. If you're Link Darner in the Green Bay huddle, it's, guys, we got to get the ball. Who's our best player? Sandy Cohen. Let's try and run a set play for him. If not, Bell's your second option as he has been the most productive or second most productive player this evening. Well, Green Bay just looking to get a good shot at this one. They trail by one. There's the look. Uh, good look at Sandy Cohen. You would think he would get a touch here in the final eight seconds, but will Texas Southern allow him to? And you're going to see some token full court pressure to make sure that they don't just roll the ball in. Phoenix are out of timeouts. Possession arrow in their favor. Here we go. Cohen's got the ball. Four seconds. Cohen. Southern will take the timeout. Sandy Cohen has given the Phoenix a one-point lead. A terrific play to get a one-on-one -on -one situation. Good defense by Butler, but Cohen a little bit better offense. You've got one senior on that Green Bay team, and he's been the leader offensively all year. There was little doubt if he had the ball in his hand, he was going to take that shot. A well-designed play by Coach Darner to get a one-on-one -on -one situation for Cohen. And now, if you're Texas Southern, it's the home run play, the victory play, the Bryce Drew play, whatever you call it, that's what you're drawing up. With about one and a half seconds, you have one, maybe two dribbles. The officials are looking at this and trying to make sure they've got the correct time on the clock. They might end up adding some. We'll see if we can see it here. I believe this is the same look that the officials are looking at right now. Ball goes through with about 1.7, 1.6. We'll be pretty close. Well, normally when they look and review, they always put something back on the clock. And tonight I'm proven wrong, perhaps. Well, it's a one-point game, so if you're Texas Southern, you're looking, you've got to get one shot off and hope that you can knock it down and head to the championship game at Marshall. Green Bay needs one stop to get to the championship game. You're in Green Bay. The crowd comes to their feet. Well, you've got a man on the ball in Josh McNair so that... Devontae Lumpkin does not have a wide open look on the pass. Lumpkin to inbound. And they'll let them throw it in short to John Jones and make him take one dribble and shoot it about 70 feet. Your Lumpkin, you can run. Inbound, the shot on the way for the win. It's off the mark, and Green Bay is heading to the CIT Championship game. Just a terrific effort by this Texas Southern team. They've been road warriors all year long. Coach John Jones and his team has set the school record for wins. They thought they had it, but then Sandy Cohen came back home to Green Bay, and he's going to be playing for a championship. Some big-time dunks. Cohen leading the way for Green Bay with 23 points. Bell 
sets a career high with 21 points. But take their head off to Texas Southern. What a season they had and a run home to 21. Armstrong leading the way. You can't say enough about that young man, Tyreek Armstrong, tonight. Oh, he was fabulous. He'll be back for another year. Hats off to Jeremy Combs, an outstanding senior season, as well as DeBacchio Butler, who kept them, kept them in this game. And all of a sudden, Green Bay, they're headed to Huntington, West Virginia. They will take on Marshall on Thursday night in the CIT Championship. Should be quite a game. Of course, you can watch that right here on CBS Sports Digital. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us. For Rich Sobosik, I'm Ted Stefaniak saying so long from Green Bay, where the final score once again in overtime, Green Bay 87, Texas Southern 86. Thanks for watching, everyone, and good night.